Kalmantan and you are watching my YouTube channel Learners of Civil Engineering. Guys, today I will be discussing my lecture number 6 with you guys which is related with the subject of Foundation Engineering and the contents of today's lecture are Lateral Earth Pressure, Different Cases of Lateral Earth Pressures and uh, Different Numerical Problems related with the Different Cases of uh, Earth Pressures. Guys, what is lateral earth pressure and why it is important for us as a civil engineer to know about the lateral earth pressure. Now as you guys know the retaining structures for example retaining walls and basement walls they are subjected to the pressure of the backfill or always they support soil systems. So now what will be the magnitude of the pressure acting on them will be related with the design of these structures. So that's why we are studying the earth pressures. Now there may be different cases of the walls which are supporting the soil. Like for example with the help of gravity walls we can support our soil system. This is an example of a pre-cost concrete block wall which is supporting this backfill. Uh, the other system of gravity retaining wall might be the gabion walls okay, in which we are using these uh, boulders and a uh, wire mesh. The third case of the gravity retaining wall will be the concrete crepe wall like in the picture you can see this is an example of a concrete crepe wall which is supporting this backfill. You can use the a boulders wall as well in order to support different types of slopes, different types of retaining structures. Now the other case of the retaining wall might be the cantilever wall. Cantilever walls are thin walls uh, which are reinforced with reinforcement. Uh, there are two types of the cantilever walls, counter four retaining walls and the buttress retaining wall. In counter four retaining wall we are having these triangular supports on the back of the retaining wall and in the buttress retaining wall we are having these triangular support on the face of the retaining wall. We can support our soil systems, our slopes with the help of uh, anchored walls in which we are providing these anchors inside the slopes for supporting the soil. We can use the mechanically stabilized earth wall technique in which we are using these metallic strips. These metallic strips are interlocked in the face of the wall and by the combined action of these two they are supporting the slopes. We can use the piling retaining wall to retain our soil masses like this is an example of a wooden planks and sheet pal wall. This is a wooden plank and that is a sheet pile. Now by the combined action of these two this slope is supported. We can use the angled sheet pile wall as well in which slopes will be anchored and the anchor will be connected with the sheet piles. So guys these are the different examples of the retaining walls which are subjected to the earth masses which are subjected to the slopes which are subjected to the earth pressures. Now in order to design all these structures we must be having an estimation of the lateral soil or the earth pressures in order to be able to properly design them. Now guys, what is earth pressure and what is lateral earth pressure? As the name suggests, earth pressure is pressure which is exerted by the soil, which is exerted by the earth in different directions. Okay? It may be vertical 
and it may be horizontal as well now the vertical component of the earth pressure will be known as sigma z or sigma v or sigma naught and the horizontal component of the earth pressure may be known as sigma h now as you guys know that if a heap of soil will be subjected to a vertical pressure of sigma v then its tendency to spread in the lateral direction will increase and this soil will impart or will exert a horizontal pressure as well which will be known as sigma h so we can say that sigma h is directly proportional to sigma v uh, higher the value of sigma v higher will be the value of sigma h so if we will um, replace this directly proportional sign with a constant of proportionality then we will get this sigma h divided by sigma e sigma v will be equal to k this is known as coefficient of earth pressure now there will be different cases of the earth pressure based on this coefficient uh, k value like we will be having earth pressure at rest active earth pressure and the passive earth pressure now keep one thing in your mind that the pressure exert, exerted by the soil in the horizontal direction is known as the lateral earth pressure okay and this pressure exerted by the soil in the vertical direction is known as sigma v the vertical earth pressure in order to design the retaining structures it is important for us to estimate the value of the lateral earth pressure now let me discuss the first case of the earth pressure which is known as a, the earth pressure at a rest like for example this is a wall ab subjected to a pressure of a, a backfill now if for any reason this wall will not move either away from the backfill or towards the backfill then the pressure experienced or feel by this retaining wall in this state in the at rest state will be known as the lateral earth pressure at a rest now if we consider an element of a soil at a depth of a z from the top of the backfill then it will be subjected to two types of stresses sigma v the vertical earth pressure and sigma h the lateral earth pressure lateral earth pressure will be equal to k not sigma v in this particular state now earth pressure at rest is the case of a soil before construction of a retaining wall when the soil in the field will be alone and that soil will not be subjected to any external loads so in this case there will be no movements in the soil and uh, the pressure which will be experienced or which will be there in the field will be known as the earth pressure of soil in the air test condition that will be the value of the k naught in this case and the earth pressure value will be equal to sigma h k naught into sigma v where sigma v will be equal to unit weight of the soil multiplied by the depth of the soil now this coefficient k will be find out with the help of a uh, different uh, uh, correlations like if you are having the soil fraction angle phi value then you can use the jk formula and you can estimate the value of k is 1 minus sin phi 
but keep one thing in your mind that this formula gives good result for lucent for dense compacted sand we can use this formula k naught is equal to 1 minus sin phi plus gamma d divided by gamma minimum minus 1 into 5.5 where gamma d is the actual compacted dry unit weight of the sand and gamma d minimum is the dry unit weight of the sand in the loose state. Now for normal consolidated clays k naught is equal to 0 0.95 minus sin phi and uh, for fine grain soil k naught is equal to 0 0.44 plus 0 0.42 into pi divided by 100 where pi is the plasticity index of a soil. For the over consolidated clay soil this formula will be reduced to this one k naught of the normally consolidated soil into OCR where OCR is the over consolidation ratio. You can use this formula as well k naught is equal to 1 minus sin phi into OCR whole power sin phi. Now from elastic analysis we can also use this formula k naught is equal to mu divided by 1 minus mu where mu is the Poisson's ratio of a soil. So these are the different uh, correlations with the help of which you can easily estimate the value of a k naught based on your case. Now let us discuss something about the pressure distribution and the location of resultant uh, pressure of the lateral earth pressure. Now let us assume this retaining wall AB of height H. Now the pressure distribution on the face of this retaining wall will be triangular. Okay? It will be maximum at the bottom how much will be the value the value will be k naught gamma into height of the retaining wall what will be the value of this pressure at the top it will be zero at the top because there is no soil at the top of the retaining wall okay at any depth z from top of the retaining wall its value will be equal to k naught gamma z now what will be the total amount of pressure experienced by this retaining wall AB? This total pressure will be equal to the area of this pressure distribution diagram. Now as you guys know that that is triangular pressure distribution and uh, that is the height of the retaining wall and that is the base of the pressure distribution. So the area of this retaining wall will be equal to 1 by 2 into base into height. So it will be equal to half of k naught gamma h square. Now what will be the resultant of a, what will be the location of the resultant force? This resultant force will act at a distance of h by 3 from the base of the retaining wall and at a distance of 2 by 3 of h from the top of the retaining wall. Now let us discuss a case of partially submerged retaining wall. That is the location of the groundwater table. That is the total height of the retaining wall h which will be further subdivided into two portions of H1 and H2. H1 is the height of the retaining valve above the groundwater table and H2 is the height of the retaining valve below the gr groundwater table. So H1 is like the dry zone of the retaining wall and H2 is like the wet or submerged zone of the retaining wall. Now what will be the value of the pressure at this particular location CE. Now what will be the value of CE? It will be equal to K naught into sigma V. Sigma V over here is the unit weight of the soil into H1, the height of the soil. 
So K naught gamma H1. Now what will be the value of uh, this BG? Okay. So BG has now got two components. K naught gamma H1 plus K naught gamma bar H2. We are gamma bar is the submerged unit weight of uh, the soil. Gamma bar. Gamma bar is equal to unit weight of the saturated soil minus a unit weight of a water. Now this zone will be subjected to two types of pressure. The pressure of a, the saturated soil and a, the pore water pressure. The pressure exerted by the water present inside the pores of the soil. So the pressure exerted by the saturated soil will be equal to K naught gamma H1 plus K naught gamma bar H2 because effect of K naught gamma H1 will also reach here on this line or on the bottom of the retaining wall as well and it will be subjected to a pressure of the submerged soil in this zone as well which will be equal to K naught gamma bar H2 and it will be subjected to a pore water pressure as well. The value of which will be equal to gamma W H2. Now, combining these two diagrams, this diagram and that diagram, we will get this new diagram. Okay. So, if we will like overlap this diagram over here and that diagram, then this diagram will change into this diagram and that is known as the final and real diagram. Now, what will be the value of the pressure experienced by the retaining wall in this particular state? It will be like the area ACE. This is A, this is C, and that is E. This area is equal to half of K naught gamma H1 square and area CEFB. This is C, this is E, and uh, this is F, this is B. K naught gamma H1 into H2 plus areas EFG and IJK. Area this is EFG. Area EFG is equal to half of K naught gamma H2 square plus this area IJ and K is equal to gamma W half of gamma w k naught h2 square now let us solve a numerical example on this particular concept a retaining wall 5 meter high is retained from building what will be the air thrust or pressure per meter length of the wall given the backfill is coherentless soil 530 degree gamma 18 kilo newton per cubic meter also determine the resultant force for the air thrust condition now for the soil in the address condition the coefficient of lateral or pressure k naught when we will be having the value of phi will be approximated as 1 minus sin phi so phi is 30 degree you will get the value of k naught is 0 0.5 lateral earth pressure sigma h at the base of the retaining wall will be equal to k naught gamma into height of the wall height of the wall is 5 meter unit weight of the wall is 18 kilo newton per cubic meter and the value of k naught is 0 0.5 so the value at the base of the retaining wall will be 45 kilo newton per cubic meter like if this is a retaining wall so that will be the pressure distribution in this case okay so 45 is now the value of the base of this triangle and 5 is now the value of the height of this triangle. So the area of this triangle will be the resultant pressure experienced by the retaining wall. This will be equal to half of K naught gamma H square. K naught is 0 0.5, gamma is 18 and H is 5 in this case. So the resultant pressure per meter length of the wall is how much? 112.5 kN per meter. Now let us solve another numerical on this particular concept. Figure shows a retaining wall AC. The height of this retaining wall is 4.5 meter. 
the wall is restrained from yielding the wall is restrained from yielding means the wall the pressure experienced by the wall now is in the airtight state okay calculate the lateral force p not per unit length of the wall also determine the location of the resultant force assume that for sand ocr is equal to 1.5 that is the location of the ground water table okay it is at a distance of 3 meter from the height of the retaining wall above the ground water table we are using these perimeters c is equal to 5 phi is equal to c is equal to 0 phi is equal to 35 degree gamma is equal to 15.7 kN per cubic meter and below the ground water table we will use these perimeters c is equal to 0 phi is equal to 35 degree and gamma associated will be equal to 19.2 kN per cubic meter now as a stress condition is uh, given to us and we are given with the value of phi and also the ocr value so if you are having these two values then you will use this equation k not is equal to 1 minus sin phi into ocr power sin phi so this equation will give us value which will be equal to 0.538 now at depth z is equal to 0 like at the top of the retaining wall there will be no vertical pressure there will be no horizontal pressure and there will be no pore water pressure because it is at the top of the retaining wall and the height is zero now at a distance of 3 meter from the top of the retaining wall like at this location at which we are experiencing the ground water table as well the vertical pressure sigma not prime will be equal to height 3 into unit weight which is 5.15.7 so you will get this value 47.1 kN per cubic meter per meter square the lateral pressure at this location will be equal to k not into vertical pressure k not is 0.538 and vertical pressure is 47.1 so you will get this value there will be no pore water pressure at this location is there is a no effect of the water till depth till this depth below this depth there will be incorporation of the pore water pressure now at a depth of 4.5 meter which means at the base of the retaining wall we will now have this pressure the pressure of the saturated soil in this zone and the pore water pressure as well so let us calculate all these sigma not or the vertical pressure at this location will be equal to 3 into the unit weight of the dry soil 15.7 plus 1.5 which is now this submerged zone 1.5 into the gamma bar gamma bar is gamma saturated which is 19.2 minus gamma of water which is 9.81 so the vertical stress or pressure at the base of the retaining wall will be 61.19 kN per meter square now what will be the magnitude of the lateral pressure at the base of the retaining wall it will be equal to k not into sigma not which is equal to 39.92 kN per meter square and the pore water pressure over this depth will be equal to the height of the water table 1.5 into unit weight of water which is 9.81 so this will give me a value which will be equal to 14.72 now what will be the total amount of the lateral force so or the lateral or pressure experienced by this wall ab so it will be like uh, the summation of area 1 2 3 and 4 uh, so area 1 is equal to half of 3 which is the depth 3 into the base which is 25.34 so this is area 1 area 2 is this area okay in this area we are having height 1.5 and uh, the width is equal to the same 25.34 now area 3 this is area 3 in which which is a triangle so that area of the triangle is again half of uh, height into height over here is 1.5 and base over here is 14.58 this is the base okay 
it is like the difference of 39.92 minus 25.34 and area 4 which is now the uh, pressure exerted by the pore water pressure it is again a triangle the base is 14.72 and the height is 1.5 so this will give me a total value of the pressure experienced by the retaining wall is equal to 98 kN per meter now what will be the location of the resultant so for the location of the result resultant we will use this formula let's suppose if z bar is the location of the resultant force z bar okay let's suppose if this is z bar so this z bar and that is the final pressure p naught which will be acting at a depth of a z bar from the bottom of the retaining wall so you 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 will use this equation summation of moment of pressure diagram about c divided by p naught so summation of moment of pressure diagram you are having four pressure diagrams one two three and uh, four now if you are dealing with the pressure diagram number one okay so this will create a moment uh, the magnitude of which will be equal to area of this pressure diagram 38.01 multiplied by the moment arm okay so as you guys know that the pressure distribution in the retaining wall is how much h by 3 from the base of the retaining wall okay so this is a separate retaining wall in this case you can consider this as a separate retaining wall okay this is 1.5 meter so 1.5 meter will be added and uh, on top of this is 3 meter okay so h by 3 3 divided by 3 so this is the movement which is there in the area diagram number one and the movement in the area diagram number two about the base will be equal to area divided by two which will be equal to area multiplied by the movement arm so movement arm over here will be h by two so h over here is 1.5 divided by 2 plus 10.94 into 1.5 divided by 3 which is now the movement of uh, the area diagram number 3 so over here the area is 10.94 and the movement will be there at a distance of h by 3 from the base of the wall so over here the distance is 1.5 divided by 3 then the movement in the pressure diagram number 4 it will be again equal to 11.04 which is the area of the pressure, pressure diagram multiplied by the movement arm which is h by 3 so h over here is 1.5 divided by 3 the value of p naught is 98 kN per meter so solving this equation you will be able to know about the location of the resultant as well which is at a distance of 1.76 from the base of the retaining wall. Now let us solve a numerical number third on the same topic. Figure 13.a shows a non-yielding vertical retaining wall. Non-yielding means a rest condition. A sandy backfill underlined by clay. This is sand and that is clay okay over here we are experiencing again a groundwater table at a distance at a distance of four meters from the top of the retaining wall determine the magnitude of the resultant force per length of the wall p naught so we will use this condition about the groundwater table gamma 18 kilonewton per cubic meter phi is equal to 34 degree c is equal to 0 ocr is equal to 2 clay gamma saturated 19 kN per cubic meter lake cold element 36 plaster element 14 and ocr is 3 so first of all we will determine k naught 
and for the k naught we will use this equation k naught for sin will be equal to 1 minus sin phi into OCR whole power sin phi so we will get this value 0 0.65 and k naught for clay liquid limit of which is 36 and plastic limit of which is 14 so plasticity index will be equal to 22 so now you can use this equation easily k naught is equal to 0 0.44 plus 0 0.42 into pi divided by 100 into ocr power 0 0.5 so this will give me the value of k naught is equal to 0 0.922 now at a depth of z is equal to 0 there will be no vertical pressure there will be no water uh, pore water pressure there will be no sigma h at a distance of uh, z equal to 4 meter sigma naught will be equal to 4 into 18 because depth over here is 4 and game over here is 18 so 72 kN per meter square sigma h over here will be equal to k naught of sin into sigma naught so sigma naught is 72 and k naught over here is 0 0.65 there will be no power water pressure over here because there is no uh, contribution of the groundwater table now z 4 meter it again 4 meter that will be like that was like the contribution of the sand and that will be like now the contribution of the clay so you will use k naught of clay in order to determine the value of sigma h and sigma naught is again 0, uh, 72 so over here you will get the value of sigma h which will be the contribution from the clay side will be equal to 66.38 at a depth of z is equal to 6 meter the vertical pressure will be equal to the uh, dry unit weight multiplied by the depth of the dry soil plus gamma saturated minus gamma of water into the depth of the groundwater table so this equation will give me a value which will be equal to 90.38 kN per meter square now sigma h will be equal to k naught of clay into sigma naught and this will be equal to 83.33 kN per meter square the pore water pressure will be equal to height of the uh, uh, pore water height of the saturated soil multiplied by the unit weight of water so this equation will give me a value of 19.62 so using this z is equal to 0 and the sigma h is equal to 0 z is equal to 4 meter and the pressure is 7266 and at z is equal to 6 meter and the pressure is 19.62 we will plot this diagram it will be like here so at a depth of 4 meter we will be like two pressure pressure from the sand side and pressure from the clay side okay so now what will be the location what will be the amount of the resultant pressure that will be like the area 1 2 3 and 4 so area 1 is equal to half of 4 into 46.8 this is 46.48 base of this triangle and that is the height of this triangle which is 4 so this is area 1 area 2 is this is a rectangular area this one this is the length which is equal to 66.38 and that is the height which is equal to 2 meters so this is area 2 area 3 is again that is the base which is equal to 83.33 minus 66.38 multiplied by the height which is again 2 area of this pressure diagram number 4 is the height over here is 2 and the base is 19.62 so summing all these areas we will get the amount or the magnitude of the resultant pressure experienced by the retaining wall now guys let us discuss second case of the earth pressure which is known as the active lateral earth pressure case consider this retaining wall a B. Now, when this retaining wall will 
move away from the back fin. Okay. When this retaining wall will move away from the back fin, either this retaining wall may have translation or this retaining wall may have rotation at the base. In both the cases, when this retaining wall will move away from the back fin, then the pressure experienced by the retaining wall in this state will be known as the active lateral earth pressure. Like this is a retaining wall AB. In this retaining wall will have a slight movement delta LA away from the back fill. Then the pressure experienced by the retaining wall at this new position A prime B will be known as the active earth pressure. Now when this retaining wall will move away from the back fill, then the particles tendency will be to move downward and the shear resistance will be in the upward direction in this particular state. Now if you will again consider a prismoidal element of soil at a depth of z then it will be subjected to a vertical pressure sigma v or sigma naught and a horizontal pressure of a sigma h. Now what will be the principal major principal stress in this case and what will be the minor principal stress in this case. Now when the wall will move away from the back fill then sigma v will be constant and sigma h will decrease okay so sigma v in this case will be the major principal stress sigma 1 and sigma h in this case will be the minor principal stress sigma 3 okay <clears throat> Now in this case, soil is the actuating element because it is the pressure of the soil which is moving the retaining wall away from its body. So in this case, we will use the concept of a plastic equilibrium. Now plastic equilibrium is that state of the soil in which every particle of the soil will be at the verge of a failure or the maximum shear stress of the soil will be achieved and failure will be about to happen okay at this failure plane bc prime now the pressure the coefficient of the earth pressure in this state will be equal to ka Now what will be the angle of this failure line AC prime? This failure line AC is not actually it is not plane, it is a curved line ADC. But for simplification, we are assuming that this line is a what that is a plane line. And the angle supplanted by this failure line with the horizontal will be equal to 45 plus 5 by 2 in the case of active or pressure of a retaining wall. Now what is space over pressure? Now in the active or pressure the soil was the actuating element but in the space over pressure the retaining wall is the actuating element due to any reason when the wall will move inside the backfill then the pressure experienced by the retaining wall in this state in this condition will be known as the peso earth pressure. Now if this is the original position of the retaining wall AB and if let's suppose a lateral translational translation or rotation will happen and this wall will reach a new position A prime B and uh, failure plan will be uh, produced then we will say that uh, the soil will be in passive condition and will experience a horizontal pressure which will be known as the passive or pressure. Now the particles of soil in this case will move in the upward direction and the shear resistance will be now in the 
downward direction on this failure plane BC prime. Now, if we will consider an element of a soil at a depth of Z from the top of the retaining wall, then again it will be subjected to two stresses, the vertical stress and the horizontal stress. The vertical stress in this condition will again be constant, but the horizontal stress when the wall will move inside the uh, soil or, or inside the backfill, then this sigma h will increase. So, we can say that sigma h in the case of place over pressure is the major principal stress and sigma v is the minor principal stress. And the coefficient of the earth pressure that we will use in this particular state will be the Kp, coefficient of place over pressure. Now, the angle subtended by the failure plan or the failure line with the horizontal in this case will be equal to 45 minus 5 by 2. Now, if we will summarize this uh, concept, then at the address condition there is no wall movement. In the active condition, wall moves away from the backfill and in the peso condition, wall moves towards the backfill. Okay? The angle subtended in this case with the horizontal by the failure plan is 45 plus 5 by 2 and the angle subtended by the failure plan in this case is 45 minus 5 by 2. The tendency of the particles to move in the earth in the active earth pressure is in the downward direction and uh, the shear resistance will be in the upward direction. And the tendency of the particles to move in the pace of earth pressure will be in the upward direction and the shear resistance will be in the downward direction to balance for uh, this particular case. Now, what will be the variation of the earth pressure with the wall tilt? So, if this is the retaining wall, then on the surface of the retaining wall, when there will be no movement, there will be act, there will be earth pressure at a rest. But when the wall will move away from the retaining wall, when the soil will reach in the active state, then the earth pressure will decrease and vice versa is for the peso case. When the wall will move inside the backfill, then the pressure will slightly increase. Okay? And the soil will be in the peso state. The soil will not move, but the retaining wall will move inside the backfill. Now, how much is the value of uh, the LA? and the LP in order to produce the active condition or the peso condition in the soil. So, for loose end, this LA should be from 0 0.001 to 0 0.002 and LP should be equal to 0 0.01 in order to create a condition of a peso or pressure in the soil system. Then for this and this value will be equal to 0.0005 to 0.001 and this value will be equal to 0.005. For the soft clay, this value will be equal to 0.002 and 0.004. For stiff clay, LA will be equal to 0.01 and LP will be equal to 0.02 in order to create the active and passive conditions respectively in the soil systems. Now, you can see that LP is greater than LA. So, like more movement will be required for the retaining wall to create the passive condition in the soil as compared with the active condition. So, guys, I hope uh, this video was useful for you. Uh, kindly like and share this video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Thank you so much.